So on Thursday night, leftists across the country were stricken by grief, mourning the death of a man named Bernard, uh, Brandon Bernard. He was, as is so often the case with those the left choose to mourn, a convicted criminal. Uh, one of five federal executions scheduled to be carried out between this week and inauguration. If all of these executions are performed, it will make 13 total since July. And Donald Trump will be, as the BBC has labeled him, the, quote, most prolific execution president in more than a century. The Huffington Post was slightly less reserved, accusing Trump of going on an end-of-office killing spree. Now, it remains to be seen whether all of these executions in the coming weeks will provoke the same level of performative outrage and sorrow. Uh, in Bernard's case, if you happen to check Twitter on the night of his lethal injection, uh, you might be forgiven for thinking that a Nobel-winning human rights champion or war hero had met his demise. Kim Kardashian, especially broken up about it all, called Bernard amazing, hopeful, positive, and, quote, selfless as always. As always. Elsewhere, we were urged to say his name and remember his name, to mark down the day of his death and remember it as a historical outrage and atrocity. Many news outlets published articles decrying the execution. Now, if you're wondering what Brandon Bernard actually did to earn this punishment, you'll have to read quite far down into these articles to find the crime described in any great detail, if it's described at all. But here's an account of Bernard's crime from the DOJ website. Here's what they say. It says, Brandon Bernard and his accomplices brutally murdered two youth ministers, Todd and Stacy Bagley, on a military reservation in 1999. After Todd Bagley agreed to give a ride to several of Bernard's accomplices, they pointed a gun at him, forced him and Stacy into the trunk of their car, and drove the couple around for hours while attempting to steal their money and pawn Stacy's wedding ring. While locked in the trunk, the couple spoke with their abductors about God, pleaded for their lives, the abductors eventually parked on the Fort Hood military reservation where Bernard and another accomplice doused the car with lighter fluid as the couple, still locked in the trunk, sang and prayed. After Stacy said, Jesus loves you and Jesus take care of us, one of the accomplices shot both St Todd and Stacy in the head, killing Todd and knocking Stacy unconscious. Bernard then lit the car on fire, killing Stacy through smoke inhalation. Now, Bernard's many defenders cried that he made a mistake did a bad thing, quote, made poor choices, to use Kim Kardashian's phrasing. But, you know, we shouldn't execute him now because of it, they say. Yes, but kidnapping two people, driving them around in the trunk of their car while they beg for their lives, then murdering them in cold blood and burning their bodies is not merely a poor choice. It is vile, unspeakable, unthinkable, shocking evil. It's the kind of choice that once you make it, you have forfeited your right to live in a civilized society. In our country, you know, we don't execute people for stealing a loaf of bread or voicing an offensive opinion or criticizing the government. We don't even execute people for much more serious crimes like sexual assault and child abuse. In order to earn the death penalty, you have to really earn it. You must act with a level of cruelty and depravity and indifference that just sends shivers down the spine of any person with a conscience. Brandon Bernard acted in that way and received the punishment he deserved because of it. Now, speaking of depraved indifference and cruelty, the next person in line for a federal execution set to be carried out uh, today, I believe, in fact, is Alfred Burjo. Now, already some on the left are rallying to his defense. Burjo was convicted in 2002 of killing his two-year-old daughter. He beat her to death by bashing her head against the windshield and dashboard of his truck. This was his final act of savagery towards the child who he had already molested and tortured, uh, whipped her, burned her. The others on deck are Lisa Montgomery, strangled a pregnant woman to death, cut her open and kidnapped her baby. Corey Johnson, convicted of murdering seven people. And Dustin John Higgs, uh, found guilty in the murder and kidnapping of three women. Now, Surveying this collection of bloodthirsty monsters, I find no reason to shed any tears except for their victims whose stories are not told and whose names are not put on the poster boards or made into hashtags. But with that said, you know, I don't look, I don't begrudge those who take a principled and consistent stand against the death penalty in all cases. I used to hold that view myself. It's not unreasonable to argue that the government simply shouldn't execute anybody, no matter how monstrous they may be. 
Um, I've come to find that argument flawed, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a perfectly valid and cogent argument all the same. The problem is that a great many of the people rushing to defend men like Brandon Bernard and Alfred Burjo are not making valid and cogent arguments. The anti-death penalty argument is primarily advanced by those who do not have the intellectual or moral credibility to defend it. Their answer to the question, who do we have the right to kill, is so impossibly deranged that you wonder how a person can hold such a view and still manage to sleep at night or look themselves in the mirror. So let's never forget that when someone on the left speaks out against capital punishment, insisting as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ayanna Presley did last night, that we abolish the death penalty, they do not actually want to abolish the death penalty in all cases. Rather, they wish to abolish the death penalty for convicted criminals while still giving the death penalty to children. The pro-abortion slash anti-death penalty position suggests that a man who tortures and rapes a toddler before crushing her skull against the windshield of his car has the right to live, but a child in the womb doesn't. Greater moral standing is given to the mass murderers and child killers than unborn infants. Much greater because the infant has absolutely no moral standing at all by this way of thinking. I mean, remember that. The pro-abortion people, they believe that the child in the womb has zero moral standing. None. Uh, I can understand the argument that both the baby and the criminal have the right to life. I don't agree with it, but it's coherent. Okay, I can even understand the nihilistic argument that neither have the right to life. You know, nobody has a right to life. Again, I certainly don't agree with that, but it, it's coherent. But the argument that only the criminal has the right to life and the child has no right to life is completely incoherent morally and intellectually. It doesn't even rise to the level of nihilism. It's something even more debased. And a whole lot more confused. But the irony is that the people who advocate for executing children, but not child killers, will often make the hypocrisy charge against those who take the opposite view. We hear this over and over again. We heard it a lot last night. They insist that somehow it's inconsistent and convoluted to be anti-abortion and pro-death penalty. But there is nothing illogical or strange about this position at all. I mean, even some pro-lifers will, will, say, will, will make this same case, that, there's some, that somehow there's, a, there's an inconsistency here. No. We who hold this position believe that it is always wrong to intentionally kill a defenseless and innocent person. Those are the three qualifiers. Intentionally kill, defenseless, innocent. We do not believe that it is always wrong to kill anyone at all under any circumstance. Almost nobody believes that, save Quakers and the rare libertarian who actually takes his rhetoric to its logical conclusion. Everybody else accepts that sometimes it's okay to kill a person. Now, we, who hold this view, suggest that sometimes includes self-defense, war, and executing convicted murderers. The left would say that sometimes means perhaps self-defense and war and also babies in the womb. That's their position. That is the inconsistent position. That is what makes no sense whatsoever. No moral sense anyway. So this is not ground that we concede to them and, 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 and pretend that there's some sort of inconsistency in being pro-life and pro-death penalty. I'll say it again one more time, just, just to be very clear about this. Our position is that it's wrong to execute babies... But that doesn't mean it's wrong to execute a man who, for example, beats his two-year-old daughter to death against the windshield. That's the position. Their position is utterly deranged, completely incoherent. And we should remember that, especially in the days ahead when they are lamenting uh, these executions carried out against people who absolutely deserved it, deserve it and have earned it. And it's as simple as that. Hey, you. Uh, yeah. You, you right, you right there. Hit the subscribe button right now. Do it, do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It's somewhat appreciated.